Hi everyone, I'm Lynn from Finds of Yesterday and today we're talking Monet. Not the famous artist, but the famous jewelry company from the mid-1900s. They produced beautiful brooches and earrings and necklaces like this one that I have on today and this bracelet that matches. It's a very nice set and they produce classy items for the budget-minded woman. So today we're going to talk a little bit about the brief history, the types of jewelry they made, and how it's evolved over the years, and also, is it worth anything? Well, we're going to check out eBay Solds and see how much it's selling for nowadays, so stay tuned! Hi everyone, today we're talking Monet Jewelry. We're going to talk a little bit about the history of it and what type of pieces they've created over the years and how they've evolved over the years. Plus, we're going to talk about markings and clasps and if it's valuable today. We're actually going to go to the eBay site and check out the solds and see what their pieces are selling for today. So the company started in 1927 as Monocraft Products by Jay and Michael Cherno in Providence, Rhode Island and they were making these brooches that were monograms and they were silver and gold plated plates that they used in women's handbags or on handbags and they they actually had initials you could change out on them so it was a really pretty cool product and it got them excited about jewelry so they expanded into jewelry in the 30s by the, they by the end of the 30s they ended up shifting their focus mostly to jewelry so women at that time could really no longer afford expensive jewelry because of the 1920s you know economic crisis the depression at that time so Monocraft wanted to make something for everybody, so he, they decided to uh, continue on their jewelry and have good quality jewelry at a lower price, something that every woman could afford. At that time, they, were, they decided to start making art deco pieces of rhinestones, and they still were doing their monograms, and they had uh, flora and fauna, which is animal and plant motifs, and they switched solely to jewelry in 1937 and became Monet at that point. We hit the 1940s and it's war time, so military motifs were popular then. They used a lot of sterling silver because of the rations for the war that they needed the metal for, and they did a lot of fur clips and brooches and they started their charm bracelets. This, in the late 1940s, they created the spring ring for putting on the top of their charms so you could interchange out your charms easily on your bracelet. I think that is a cool idea. But you can see here on the left side, the little skate has a spring ring on it. It's, it's a really good idea. And they continued that on until later into the 70s. We hit the 1950s and things started getting bigger and bolder and they started making large statement pieces, necklaces, and they did a lot of gold plated jewelry in rose and yellow gold, which were the most popular. But they also triple plated their jewelry so the color of the gold would last a long time and if you look at pieces nowadays they still hold up to the test of time. It's amazing some of their pieces that almost look brand new to this day. Then also in what happened in 1955 was Trademark came along and Monet could trademark their name at that point. So 1955 they trademarked Monet. Here's some of the ads from the 1950s. You can just see how big and bold these necklaces are and they, they started doing sets as well. So you could have the earrings that matched your necklace, that matched your brooch, that matched your bracelet. It was a popular thing back in the 1950s and it continued on. Then we hit the 1960s and women are starting to go into the workforce at that time. So they wanted to make 
jewelry that was more workforce appropriate. So they, they did a lot of these tassels, which I sell a lot of these tassel necklaces. People still love them and wear them today. And they were there was a lot of brass being used at that time. And the charm bracelets became more popular about this time frame. And they were still doing flowers and animals and that type of thing. And everyday objects they included in a lot of their, their themes. Then we hit the 1970s and you can just see how they're evolving. Things are getting streamlined and just, just changed over the years. Um, they added pierced earrings because it was so popular, they decided to expand on their pierced earring lines. But they also still had clip-on, and as you can see on the middle earring on this picture, the, the hoop, it showed Monet's clip that they used. And they had several of these, like this angelfish brooch. They had a lot of cutout type brooches at that time too. But the thing in the 1970s was their line they called Siani. And this was a lot of fine pieces that they started adding back into their collections because I guess, you know, the depression's over with and people can afford a little bit more at this point in time. So now they're using sterling silver, 14 karat gold, semi-precious stones, vermeil, which is gold over silver. And then they also invented I can't say a lobster claw class because that's not accurate, but it's similar to one. And we'll, sh we'll talk a little bit more about that later. But as you can see, these uh, sterling silver necklaces are starting to change. The look of them is starting to change. They're getting more almost like the Art Deco style. We hit the 80s and the colors explode. It is like big and bold, bright colors, unique pieces. They weren't afraid to experiment at this time. They used a lot of intricate metal work, or not so much intricate, but a lot of heavy metal work. And they did collabs with um, Yves Saint Laurent and LaCroix and Christian Dior. You can almost see that in these pieces. On the screen here it's uh, big and bold and bright and beautiful colors once they did this it be Monet became more popular and more known and people just fell in love with them so by 1994 they were bought out they were actually bought out a couple different times throughout the years like back in 1968 General Mills bought them then in 1989 to 1994, uh, they became a su subsidiary of Crystal Brands Jewelry Groups. From 1994 to 2000, Chase Capital Partners had acquired them, which includes Marvella and Trafari, which are two other jewelry lines. And then in 2000, then we have Liz Claiborne who bought them out. So the 1990s to 2000, they were doing a lot of the collabs and the word got out and Liz Claiborne fell in love and bought them out. Monet had everything made in the USA before the year 2000 and once she was bought out or once they were bought out, Liz moved them to Puerto Rico. All right, moving on to some of the markings you'll see. They had so many different varieties of marks. It's hard to just narrow it down. This isn't the extent of them. There was actually more than this. So I'm gonna break it down and try to simplify it a little bit. It's Mo Monocraft was the first one, obviously, because that's where they started. So from 19, 1927 to 1937, they used this Monocraft symbol. They used it on them clickets, which were the monogram pieces, their signature pieces, and they call them clickets because you could click it out and change the letter if you wanted. I guess if you got married, you could change it to your new letter. <laughs> Next one is Monet Jewelers. That, that's an early mark. 
So that was from 1937 to I don't know when. I don't know when they stopped making that. I can't find the information for that. So if anybody knows, please leave it in the comments because I could not find that information. Then moving on, 1937 to 1955, as you can see here, there's a wide variety and a lot of these are small letters and big letters. They changed frequently. So you can see it goes from small letters to all capital letters to small letters to all capital letters. One with an oval and then there's actually Monet Sterling as well. So if you see a Monet Sterling, don't think it's a fake because they did make Sterling pieces. But one thing you want to take note with all of these that are in red is that they did not have a copyright symbol on them. So if it's if there's no copyright symbol on it, it's before 1955. That's one good way to tell if it's 55 or earlier or 55 and later. We have from 1955 to current. So in 1955 they could apply for a patent so they were um, applying for that and you can see the top one is when it, they were applying for it and haven't got their notification yet that they're approved so you'll see patent pending on them and I hardly ever see that. It was probably a very short time and once they were approved then they started throwing out some more different logos which you can see you'll see the copyright on the left you'll see it on the right you'll see it with small letters you'll see it with big letters so there's a wide variety out there and there's more than what I have on the screen then the bottom one is the more recent the more current style is the cursive or italic one that's what you'll see most of now then they had a lot a variety of clasps um, Again, the hoop earrings on the right have the Monet actual clip style that they created. There's a cuff bracelet on the left that just has a almost like a box claw or a box clasp um, style. But I think what's more popular with Monet that's more distinguishable is this little half horseshoe style with the fold over clasp in it. And then they had a hook they still used hooks and a spring ring you'll see spring rings on a lot of pieces and then the middle one in white is the, like the sliding one that I, I I'll show you here in a bit and the one thing on I wanted to point out was the bottom one on the right is a specific clasp that Monet applied for in 1976 view of it. We have to talk lobster claw clasps because it is such a controversy. People think that if it has a lobster claw it can still be vintage. Well there was a variety of clasps that were they filed for a patent for but they're different. So let's take a look at the patents here. The one on the left you can see it's kind of elongated more is flatter and it looks like the current one in a way but it's very distinguishable there's a very distinguishable difference you see this clasp out you can't call it a lobster claw clasp because it's not officially then the middle one is the one that Monet filed for the one on the left is not Monet's the one in the middle is Monet's in 1976 they filed for this on the bottom of that image you'll see how it opens so it opens in the middle and I have a piece here that I'm going to show you you can get a better visual of it then the one on the right is what you're going to see nowadays if you see this it is not vintage it's from 1996 on so officially four years of it is vintage four five six we're up to six years now most likely if it has this lobster claw on the right on it it is not vintage because that's what they almost use all the time now that and toggles so I hope this little bit helps you determine this is one of the biggest factors in me picking up a necklace and saying it's new it's old if it does it or it, it helps me narrow it down let's put it that way the lobster claw if it has a lobster claw on it, I know it's newer, it's not vintage. If it has that other lobster claw on it, 
what we what I, I'm not allowed to call a lobster claw, then I I start looking closer at it and see other details that might point out. I wanted to show you some of the clasps on some of these Monet pieces. These are a couple pieces I have, and this particular one I showed you on my shirt I was wearing. Here's a better view of it, and it's got a beautiful chain on it. And here's the clasp up close. It has that like half horseshoe or kind of a horseshoe look on both sides, and a fold over clasp, and it also has. Monet on the back side, as you can see, maybe. It does not have a copyright symbol on it, so that means this is before 1955. It also has here the matching bracelet. And these I just love because they slide. Let me show you the necklace. This piece right here slides up and down the chain so you can adjust it to be more like a choker necklace or you can have it longer. I like the dangles on it, the little tassels at the end. So it's a pretty nice piece. So that was made before 1955 because there was no copyright symbol on it. This piece here is a chunky statement piece. So that tells you it's, it's newer, probably 80s because they like to do big and bold and in the 80s. Let's look at the Monet clasp on it. The hook and it has the Monet name with a copyright symbol in let me look closer the copyright symbol is in front of Monet so this one tells you it was made after 1955 but we can kind of tell from how chunky and the big lengths it is probably the 80s. This last piece I wanted to particularly show you because it has, it's a really pretty link. I love it. And it stays so shiny. But look what kind of clasp it has. It has that patented one that Monet made. It has the rivet, as you can see, in the center. That's what makes it look different than a typical lobster claw clasp that you see nowadays. Let me open it for you. So it looks like this opened. It opens on the top. So that's what you want to look for in a Monet clasp. They don't use all these type of clasps. They use a wide variety of clasps, but this is in particular the Monet clasp. So let's look at the hang tag on it. So on this side, it says Monet with no copyright symbol. But you flip it over and it has Monet on the other side. If I can get it to flip. as Monet on the tag with a copyright symbol. So therefore it is after 1955 because it has a copyright symbol on it. But it's newer than that because it has this type of clasp which wasn't invented until 1976. So it's definitely a necklace from after 1976. I wanted to show you this other necklace. This is not Monet but here is your typical lobster claw clasp that we see all the time and they are more recent. They're made nowadays at, from 1996 on because they weren't invented till then. So let's hold them up together so you can see the difference. All right, can you see the difference here now? Definitely a difference. I hope this helps you, but that's all I wanted to show you. So let's check out eBay and see what Monet Jewelry is selling for today. I'm curious to see. I do sell a lot of it and I'll be happy to show you some of the pieces. So let's head on over there and see what's sold. Okay, here we are on the eBay screen and 
I typed in Monet, as you can see up here, and then I scrolled down to the left side here and clicked on sold items and it automatically, automatically fills in completed items. So go back up. And I also came over here and did shipping, um, price plus shipping lowest first. So this is the lowest you'll see Monet jewelry selling for, which let's look at this first one. It's a pair of earrings for $1.95. Wasn't on auction. It was just buy it now, which they had a sale on it. So it was 51% off. They sold it for $1.95 plus free shipping. Now shipping's probably going to be about say four dollars and the eBay fees probably about another 65 cents. So this person's in the hole on this. Why even sell this for this price? Same with this one. Three dollars for shipping plus $1.25. That's four twenty-five. You know with the fees say 50 you no know, probably 75 cents somewhere around there and um, shipping cost they're in the hole basically another 99 cents and they you pay for shipping they're still they probably made 50 cents if that um so you'll see a lot of these on auction one bid one bid one bid one bid people just go in and just buy them all up for one dollar and then relist them for a higher price i would just take these and lot them all together if they weren't selling at a higher price then I would just lot them all together and sell it for a bigger amount and make some money on it, not just let it go like this. This is ridiculous. So then let's go over to the next tab. I went over here and I put in highest first. Look, let's look at some of these awesome pieces. Up here you'll see I put Monet minus lot. Now do not put a space in here like this because it won't eliminate it. You have to have it minus lot all in one and it's going to bring up some lots because they didn't use the word lot in their description so look at these pieces this is a mix of some monet and nigger look at this fringe monet dangle bib egyptian style necklace they had it listed at 394 it probably sold for 350 or somewhere in there that's a great set and we have another one here it's chunky bamboo style these are some great pieces by monet and this one wow they call it a mandira necklace and it has the bracelet and the earrings and a brooch that go with it that is awesome for about probably 250 Here's a nice charm bracelet. Um, and sterling silver, 20 charms on it for almost $250. And another bib bracelet like the one up above for $263. Here's another one at $250 in 1980s. Isn't that straight out of the 80s? That is a chunky, colorful, bold piece. And we have a green stone minty signed $245 signed Monet and we've got lots here's another one with gems inside of it it's Etruscan style almost $200 it's sold for another one around $200 this 1980s oh this is a uh, um Yvette Yev's Yves Saint Saint Laurent I can never pronounce that. They call it brutalist style. Here's another one that's 180, 150 to 180 probably. This is an Elda Krekic signed Monet. Oh, it's a Christian Dior uh, piece. A collab with them. Here's a tassel one that sold for almost 200. Not all tassel ones sell that high, but here's a nice panther style i have one of these listed it's a necklace and hmm makes me wonder because it's sold for probably 150 dollars but it's a three piece here's a cleopatra style 179 dollars no 
lot and another lot. Here's one with a tassel. Here's a Egyptian style again. They call it a runway. You usually want to use a runway um, in your title when you have something that elaborate. All these for, are over a hundred dollars. Here's a pretty um, grapoy cabochon. Pretty stones in it. That one went for one hundred and fifty dollars plus shipping. Here's another one. Don't think them to go together, but maybe they do. Here's a beautiful blue topaz stone. $150 approximately. $149. A Monet brooch that's like the United States Capitol building. I've never seen one of them. Sold for $150. And we got another one. Uh, cabochon faux blue. Uh, Monet Smithsonian collection. About $125 or so. That's a cool one. Oh, here we go again with this Mandura, $144. And a filigree pendant. Lorenza Monet's chain. Oh, I see. Here's another Brutalist Monet. So you can see some of the higher end Monet ones. Let's go back to the low end and go to the middle of the road ones. Let me just type in recently added or newly listed. How about recently listed? These are sold ones. So $17 for a chain. Here's another $1.99 auction. This is an interesting piece. Snake textured. Let's find out what this one looks like. That is definitely interesting. I don't think I've seen that piece. Let's look at the hook. It's a hook closure. Let's see if they got a, they got a close up of the tag and it's got a copyright symbol on it. So it's after 1955. Probably before 1980, I would say. Some earrings, blue purple cabochons, probably for 25 or so. Well, this is different. Monkey statement necklace. I don't think that was Monet. Monet branch, $11. Wow, that's a pretty, that's repurposed as well. I'm seeing repurposed on a lot of these. So that means somebody redid something about it. Here's a real pretty Monet sea glass choker that looks like it should be worth a lot more than $4.25 shipping. Another one for 14, 15, 19, 19. Earrings for $25, $12-$13. So not all Monet jewelry is worth a whole lot. You can still get $10-$15 for a lot of their pieces. Uh, a lot of these I think went too low. Here's a $25 Bird of Paradise brooch. That's really pretty. These are interesting different earrings for $30. I think the diff more different they are, more unique they are, the higher the price. Here's a $32 koi fish brooch. This one, $17.56. That's pretty, pretty wreath brooch. Another one for $18. Here's an owl one. That's really cute. $40. So as you can see, there's a wide variety. There's a lot of different butterflies they make and they all sell 18 to $30, or 15 to $30. So that kind of gives you an idea of the middle of the road, 
There's the low end and the high end. Let's go see. Let's go back to the high end ones. And scroll down and see some around the $100 range. This lot. So here's a rare green one, it says. Green stones and enamel, $129. Nice chain with a little pad on there. What is this? It's a brooch with coins on it, $125. There's a set for about 125 This one's different. It's all enamel, Art Deco style. It's a remake. $132. I gotta look at this one closer. It looks older. Hmm, I could be wrong. Now that I see it closer, yeah, it's newer. Here's the clip that I was talking about, the earring clip. Pretty. Oh, it's got different kinds of stones on it. Did you see them? Look at that. It's ribbed. It's got to be a unique feature of Monet. But there's the clip backs again. So here's the hook. I don't have a close up of the hook. It's different. So you can definitely see that Monet has produced a lot of variety and they were always putting out new and bright and colorful stuff. So hopefully that this helped you get a bigger picture of what Monet was like and help you pick it out when you're at an estate sale or a yard sale and you'll know to buy that piece. So thanks for joining me. I hope this video was helpful. We'll see you on the next one. Don't forget to like and subscribe.